Hello everyone and welcome to the Pivot Boss Trading Room. This is the mo monthly market outlook for March 2019. I wanted to do a quick uh, sound check just to make sure everything's coming through okay. So if you can hear me, just put a quick Y or yes in there. Um, and if you're having trouble, uh, let me know here. We'll be able to get you going. But for the most part here, um, what we're going to be doing is looking through some of the futures markets, looking through some stocks. I have several candidates from both the long and short side and uh, and talk about some of the recent candidates here and trades that, um, that uh, have played out nicely over the past month. We'll try to find some great candidates for the upcoming month and try not to make this session too long, perhaps somewhere between 40 and 45 minutes. If you have anything you want me to check out, please let me know. Just uh, put it in the chat there. And uh, when I have time or when it's appropriate, I'll, I'll put it up up there uh, and, and check a look. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started here. First thing I wanted to do is bring up just uh, the ES. Here's, here's the chart of the ES today, second trading day of the month, um, and had a quite an aggressive move to the downside here to begin the month. What you'll notice is price pushed above the previous month's high in the ES and then sold off a little bit, but was holding pretty well throughout much of the, the morning and had formed a little box. And that's what we talked about in the pre-market report. If you drop down to say, let's go down to the 15 minute chart here. In the pre-market report this morning, I was referencing this kind of box up here. And I mentioned that if price can't hold, say 2807, 2806 or so, then that box right there could open up quite a bit of selling pressure to the downside. And that's kind of what happened here. Once price failed to hold, it filled the gap and just took off to the downside. That was an aggressive impulse sell-off from about 2818 uh, to 2767 half, and then it bounced right back up. Um, that's a pretty solid move right there, and that range becomes the range to watch here. Uh, as we move forward, it's a great impulse move. And eventually, we could see some nice movement um, outside of that range with range extensions that could be used based off of the impulse move. So this is a solid, solid move here. Now, back to the higher time frame really quickly. What you'll notice here is that price continues to trend higher. Again, in the trading room, I, I keep saying that, you know what, for the most part, uh, I, I've been long, 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 heavy long, but at the same time, I've been cautious at those areas where we we thought we might see some selling pressure. You know, we've been caution a little cautious at an area over here where we might see some selling pressure. But for the most part, uh, been staying long because we haven't seen any real selling pressure or any selling signature. You know, no no type of rejection signature of any type. Instead, it continues to plow higher. Um, and today, while it did get an aggressive sell off. You see here that once it hit the low down here for the day, it rallied back above multiple day lows here and closed higher. Uh, not quite above the day's midpoint, but closed higher off the lows. Uh, the other thing it did is you can see this golden moving average right there. That's the eight period average pivot based EMA. And that level hit. Uh, today it crosses right into the previous month's close again when price dipped below that area and into the pivot range for the month buyers came in and defended now that doesn't mean that this thing just has to turn around and go higher like this again but at the same time you can see that bulls are coming in to defend this area if it continues to go into that zone perhaps they continue to defend a, a little while so this is the big zone to watch uh, usually when you're trending upward like this, any pullback into the pivot range offers an opportunity to continue to extend this thing higher. The only problem with that scenario is we've come all the way back to where we sold off from. We sold off away from 28s before. We dropped into the last week of uh, 2018, and then we rallied all the way back. You know, what's left to do now? Is this thing going to continue higher again? Or has it kind of lost some of its steam, and do we kind of hold in a range and build out up here? So we're kind of at a, a point in the chart here where we need to see something happen. And one of the things that we're watching in our room is this zone right here, the 2820 zone, right? Down to about 2600 to 2620. And then up here, you have 
29.50. Those are the clear price distributions right now, and price just made its move all the way up this range after reclaiming prices back above it when it dropped below. And most of the time, price will come back down to this bottom portion of the range. Very few times will it go through this prior distribution and then go straight through the previous prior distribution as well. Very few times will it go two in a row. And when it does, it tends to come back very hard two in a row. So this is going to be very interesting to see how the market progresses from here. 2820 is very, very important. And again, if it can't hold prices up here, then it's likely back to here. And if it comes back toward 2625, 2600, again, that could be another opportunity to push the ball back up toward 28 to 2820. So that's kind of a, a little bit here to watch for the ES. Again, hard to, to say that it's going to sell off when it hasn't really shown any signs of weakness. This is a different period of time in terms of the market sentiment compared to how the market sentiment was back here. Very different period of time now, especially with the Fed in line, perhaps very close to a China trade deal, other uh, you know, tailwinds as well. But for the most part, this clear level right here is going to be very important to watch because if it can't get above it, it's going to have to come back. So uh, again, keep an eye on this area up here. It continues to trend higher. So continue to work the, the trend to the upside until proven otherwise. Um, when we're looking at something like the NQ, it's very, very similar as the ES up here near 7200, hit 7211 half today, pulled back and then bounced off the lows, throwing off a little tail, showing strength inside the eight period average. It's been nothing but strength to the upside since the third trading day of the year. And again, are we about to pull back towards 6500? Or is this thing going to power through and go to the next highest key range above or key level, which is 7,700? You know, it could certainly, anything can happen, and it could certainly do that. It's just not usually what would happen. The odds favor some sort of pullback or some sort of range development. So, again, we're at the spot in the chart that's very, very important because this is the spot where a breakout and continuation will occur or a failure. That's the previous month's high right there, that blue line, and then this is the previous month's close. They're very close to each other. Tested both of them today. If ultimately one or two days from now we're down here, perhaps that could be enough to start this thing a little lower. So again, keeping an eye on this. Everything still remains bullish. Every time price dips below the eight period average, it continues to go up. So until that breaks, I mean, this thing is likely headed for another bounce until proven otherwise. So breaking back below, you know, this pivot range would open up more weakness, but until that happens, still more strength. So these markets are still str holding strong. No signs of weakness just yet. You can see the Russell 2000 showing the same amount of pullback today, but then also showing a nice bounce off the lows. Uh, took out two weak lows, dropped into the pivot range, and bounced right back up. It did close below the previous month's uh, close, but for the most part still remains within the very bullish uptrend. And again, this is this is about as strong as it gets right here. And usually, you know, bulls want to defend the pivot range for a continuation. Any failure to hold this area right here, which is the the previous month's midpoint and CVPOC, that's 1548s, that would open up much more weakness back toward 1500. So right now, still strong as well. So the equity market's still looking very good. Crude oil, on the other hand, uh, kind of quiet, but still holding above 55s. You know, this one's been very strong to the upside, but has had a couple of bounce of sideways action. Uh, these 55s right here have been very, very significant. Price pulled back to it, bounced very nicely, failed above that prior high, and had an outside day down. Today was a pullback where it rejected prices at 57. In the trading room, we saw the, you know, the very clear area of 57s where lots of sellers came in with limit orders at that area, absorbed that zone, and turned it away. It was very, very clear, and from then it was the high, highest point of the day as it turned around. So this had um, quite a bit of rejection there. So these are two days in a row where you've rejected 
on Friday, March 1st, the previous month's high and the previous month's close and had an outside day down. Day two, you pull back, rally the 57s and reject pretty hard. Also an FOMC key level and pull back. So minor higher high failure, lower high, inside day now. It's going to be interesting to see does it try again uh, a little lower. This has been uh, a nice uptrend here, but it's been choppy for right now. So I would say the key level to watch is 54.55 to 55. So it's a key, a key zone. That's the, the real zone here. If price can stay above that level, if price tests into that zone, it's still a buy opportunity. A failure to hold 54.55 opens up a rotation to 51.50. So that's kind of the playbook that I'm working off of here for crude oil. I think it has a good shot here to continue to push higher as long as 54 half remains intact into 55s. It could test down into that zone and reject it kind of like it did back here where it tested prices below 52s, hit 51 quarter, and then rallied. Uh, I think another one of those types of things is coming here for crude. On a longer term basis, we're right into the LVN, the 55 LVN, and above it now. We've rallied away from the 49.17s and uh, could be headed toward 60 bucks. So 60 could be ahead for this one. Another reason I think that is because if we bring up Visual Trader over here and bring up crude oil, you'll notice right here this is crude oil. This is the VWAP bands right here. So this is composite VWAP and then this is standard deviation one standard deviation two and three standard deviations below one two three standard deviations above and what's interesting is is when you get a very significant downtrending market you tend to see these turn downward until price is able to reestablish back above them and that's when you see this thing pop back up so this thing has not only popped back above s3 s3 has now also gone flat which means you likely return back to value. Value right here is at about 60.5. So again, if we get that push downward and reject a test of 55s again, just like we did down here, maybe this gets us back to value finally after the rejection we saw back in December. So we've seen a nice continuation up. I think ultimately the 55 zone is going to be very important. Any rejection there leads us to 60. A failure to hold that level opens up a return to 51.25. So that's the goal right there as we head forward for crude oil with value nicely above. Uh, let's see. Let's go back over here. If we take a look at gold real quickly, what you'll notice with gold is that we've had a very, very significant sell-off. We didn't quite get to 1360, but we did achieve the target that we talked about before. So if you remember, in the pre-market reports and also in the uh, trading room, I mentioned you know whenever we we drop down toward 1300, any failed new low like it was on this day could lead to a slingshot back up, and that move could be about 40 to 50 points, which could take us to 1350 to 1360 on the next swing move up that surely played out nicely as the next move got us right to 1349.8 I believe two ticks off that high I believe uh, and then it turned down now once it turned down had a different look and feel about it you know it, it, it didn't ha it didn't want to really bounce this day right here it broke below a key level previous month's close rejected it here and it's continued downward we knew that 1300 could offer an opportunity to reject but it didn't do that so instead what we're looking for yeah because this has been a big time move up right this rejection was pretty significant that's a very strong high what we're looking for now is a strong low where is it gonna find the strong low uh, in the trading room we're looking at 1275 taking out that low perhaps in the 1270 or or even below could provide a very strong rejection and that could provide an impulse sell-off that leads to a key range 
and then we have ourselves a nice new key range here to do some development after we had this one that led us higher. So this one right here is on the last leg down, I believe, and could be due for some sort of rejection type of day soon. Below 1275 would provide that type of opportunity, and that could lead to a high probability bounce. So if it happens in the next day or two days, maybe it's three days from now, who knows? Maybe it's tomorrow. Who knows? But whenever you see it, if it happens, there will be a very high probability bounce back to the midpoint between the two extremes. Uh, and then from there, this probably becomes the key range to trade off of for the next couple of few months. So this has been a very solid move, a very significant pullback. Again, watch for signs of rejection somewhere off these lows. It could provide a very, very good buy opportunity back up. And not only will the high probability opportunity take us to the mid, but it could also take us higher into 1360 to retest the high as well. So could be a huge move coming, perhaps as much as 80 to 100 points in gold. Wanted to look at IYT real quickly. IYT has been a really good one. Uh, last year was just phenomenal for its accuracy off the key levels that we put out. A lot of great movement. Uh, big exaggerated moves as well. This year it has been straight up. Just straight up. Uh, it has pulled back here to the pivot range this month. Hasn't really done a whole lot just yet. But it is sitting up here kind of in a zone that... Um, it, you know, it's right in the center of the, the key range. Not a whole lot to do right there. These are the, the pivot high, pivot low, and that's the midpoint. And here's the midpoint after getting back above the high. So kind of like what I mentioned a little bit before with the ES, you know, if it's up here, it could certainly keep on going. That's just not the norm. Instead, oftentimes what happens is it comes back down here and then goes back up and builds a little energy before it goes higher. So you know, again, this one doesn't look the best right now in terms of where it is and what might be coming here. If it can hold this pivot range, perhaps it can stay and continue higher. But I would keep an eye on IYT on uh, the midpoint here, which is 186s, because any failure to hold that level opens up a return to 180. That could be a swift move back down. So keep an eye on this one as well. All right, I have uh, some candidates here to share with you all um, taking a look at the buy side first there were some buy side candidates uh, XOP XOP is a candidate here to watch now this one is a breakout candidate and so you can see here this is an inside value relationship for those of you who know my book secrets of a pivot boss uh, it's a book that uh, I published, uh, was it almost, uh, I guess, about nine years ago. And it had continues I, uh, to basically have a, a great or lay a great foundation for what we look for in the market because it continues to work in this market. It worked in past markets. Uh, you can see it in this chart here, the way the pivot trend analysis works. And then it pops back above that zone inside value as this thing compresses and now we could be looking at explosive movement here in the month of March so anytime we have a new month I like to look for breakout candidates this is uh, one variation where you have a very narrow pivot range for the new month and it's inside the pivot range for the last month uh, when you couple that obviously with some compression here you have a candidate that has a very big breakout potential coming uh, now, I always have to put the caveat out there that just because this is a compression candidate doesn't tell you anything about direction. Uh, I, I believe that it has a high odds to, to bounce and go higher, but it could equally go to the downside. So volatility is all about you know, the spread of the data set, but it doesn't tell you directional bias. In this case, because price closed above the previous month's or the current month's pivot range here, uh, and it's, and it's opened above it, I would say there's an upward bias. And if we start to see a breakout, I think 35, 36 is a great target. That's CVPOC on a five-year basis. And if you use the current month's low price and you basically project higher 
of average monthly range for this stock over the last 10 months, you also get about 35, 36. So it's right in line with average monthly range. Now with these types of breakout candidates, you can also see movement well beyond that as well. Uh, we'll see how this continues to play out, but this is a candidate to watch for expansion. XME, this is an ETF. This is a metals and metals and mining ETF. Now this one has already kind of changed the bias of the current trend. It had been down, uh, change of bias to begin the new year. It pulled back into the pivot range and bounced, and now it's pulling back again this month into the pivot range and is showing some rejection off the bottom end of today's range. That rejection right there suggests again that we could be headed another leg higher. So it's just like this pullback leading to that bounce or this pullback leading to this bounce. This pullback will now lead to this bounce more than likely here. So again 33.33 to 34.27 is the estimated target zone, the high probability target zone based off the current month of the low right there and um, basically that's a that's a good looking um, buy the dip opportunity that's exactly what you want to see you know this is the change of bias dip that's your second buy the dip uh, and then this is your third wave right here and those are usually three good ways right there to buy uh, after a change of direction. So this one looks really good for a continuation toward 34s. That is XME. This one is Fox, F-O-X. Fox has a very clear CLVN at 49.50. That CLVN shows this dip in the profile right there. So you got this blue profile and it dips and then it comes out again. And that CLVN shows rejection. You know, nobody wanted it there. Nobody wants it here. And then price pushes through and nobody wants it again. So it's a very clear level that's showing quite a bit of support now after the change bias. You also see a very aggressive start to the year for Fox. Uh, and, and this one has a pullback that could be another buying opportunity. So you're pulling back to the trigger zone. Failed new low today. It's inside the pivot range. Again, this one has high odds to bounce toward, let's see, what is the upper end of the range here? Wow, 52 half to 53 half is the forecasted target zone based off of the 10 month average, but that includes some of this craziness over here. So I don't know if that would be as useful. Let's do the five month average and see what that looks like. It'll probably normalize it a little bit better. So for this one, yeah, that's a little better right there. So using this low and the five-month average, you get somewhere between 51.80 and 52.46. That's a lot better than 52 half to 53 half. You know, that's way out there. So this is a good one here for the long side. Again, this one is designed to be a two to three week type of candidate. Two to three week candidate. Um, all of these are designed to be you know one to five day candidates and up to two to three weeks but there's always the caveat here and that's where I get out of dodge is if this is a candidate and say I'm in say I got in here and I got in the 50 call right I'm, I'm long the 50 call and I'm in here this is my midpoint this is the previous close right that's the tail of the rejection if price is going to close below there on a closing basis for the day, then I'm out. I'm not holding on for all of this. It's it's a short-term idea. If price pulls back toward, you know, this area tomorrow, which is about the 50-25 zone, that could be a, an area to buy in. If it closed below, you know, 50 or so, then it's it's a done deal, and that's an easy way to go about it. If it closes below the midpoint of the rejection day, it's usually a good good deal to get out of dodge. So those are three good candidates here to the upside. Here's ACHC. This one is a uh, a candidate that could bounce. It's changing direction here. It's not the best in terms of uh, price action and the personality. It's a little choppy. But the way that it looks right now has has a look about it that it's changing direction and heading back towards value. 
CV puck is 38.99. This in the previous session Friday had a major breakout in rally. Uh, changed the direction of the trend here. Today was a digestive day. So again, this one could be headed much higher in the next few days and even next few weeks. Perhaps it's changing its direction back toward value. But um, again, for this one, you want it to basically remain above 28.50 to 29. OSTK is a longer term type of candidate. This was a shorter term buy uh, last month. Last month, first trading day of the year, I mentioned any pullback to 16 could be a buy for a continuation higher. It got all the way to 23s, which was a good spot, and then it pulled back some pretty deep here, uh, which we knew we, it could happen. We were looking for this thing to rally to that high, and then theoretically, I mentioned, it could theoretically come all the way to 16 and still remain bullish. So this was a good candidate last month. This one remains a good candidate for the months to come because it is a rounded bottom accumulation candidate. So down here you're seeing accumulation off the lows, very clear accumulation. You see value is down here now at 1850, so value is below current price. And all it needs is one significant breakout, and now this thing is off and running back towards, say, 42s. Right now we're trading 21s. That would be a double from where we currently are right now. And that could happen perhaps in the next five to six months. It is certainly doable here. There's been plenty of other stocks that have done it already this year or over the last five to eight weeks. Um, this one has built up enough energy over the last two to three months that it could easily spark a move back up toward 42s. So again, one thing to keep an eye on on this one is that it has earnings coming up pretty soon. This is overstock earnings coming up on the 14th, and that may be about the time where this thing explodes to the upside and takes off. Um, again, if there's any failure to hold 16s, it's a done deal, and this thing probably gets sold heavy, heavy. But right now, I think it's a great candidate to, to see a double. And that was my idea here as well. On this day when we broke up, I mentioned 16 could double to 32. 16 could double to 32. It got to 23s very quickly. And now, again, even now, 21 could still, I think, get us back over here. This thing just needs to get above 23 half, 24, and it could start rocking and rolling to the upside. So this is a longer-term candidate to continue to watch. It can continue to develop and, and accumulate before we see that breakout. I don't know when the breakout will be. Perhaps it's going to be on the 14th of March, and that might start this thing off. Uh, again, could be pretty exciting a few months ahead for overstock, but a failure to hold 16 would crush this one. Let's see. A couple more here that I had on the long side. KL. Right here, this is KL. This one's a really, really solid one. Um, oh, SE. I'll check out SE right now. Thanks for that one. Uh, this one's really, really solid. Very, very clear uptrending market. Very, very clear. Nice pullback right there. Uh, nice rejection day today. High range day as well. Uh, this one, again, could provide a bounce opportunity that takes us another leg up. I really like KL because it's uh it's it's in the right spot right now, right? Um this this uh gold has been just humming to the upside. This thing right here uh rallied out of the 1880s and has been up ever since. So this pullback right now provides at least one opportunity to continue higher. Uh and again, this is one of those where if price can't hold that midpoint 33.41 on a closing basis, then it's it's not a stock that I'm going to consider holding anymore. So if you ever do consider any of these the way I do, um, you know, again, got to know your, your ins and your out points um, because I'm not falling in love with these. I'm looking for the quick move uh, to a target and looking to get in and get out in most cases. So that's CL. Uh, a couple of new ones that we had from last week are DHI and some of the home builders. DHI was up 3% today. 
Um, this one also has a rounded bottom, so I would say keep an eye on the home builders this month as well. You can see the rounded bottom. You see the heavy rejection on Friday and then up 3% today. That was really strong. Uh, ITB, which is the iShares ETF for home construction, also up here on a pullback. That looks really strong. And then if you look at D, uh, rather K KBH, I'm in this one right now. This was up 1.85% uh, today. It got in Friday and it popped up. It was up nearly 3% today. Pulled back a little bit into the close here. But still looks really solid. Again, another rounded bottom breaking to the upside and has the potential to rally some more. Again, home builders uh, have done quite well here so far this year. We'll see if they can continue uh, to rebound a little bit. Uh, taking a look now at some sell candidates here. Some sell side candidates. Uh, Friday, AMCX was a sell side candidate for us. This was down 6% today. Unfortunately, I did not get filled that one, so I'm still shaking my fist to the heavens here on this one, but uh, <laughs> not really. Here's a 65 to 60 put spread is the one I recommended Friday when price was trading at about 67 a uh, half is when I kind of above 67 and so it was two two bucks out of the money today in one day it's you know way up it is 62 bucks so it's you know three bucks in the money at one point so that's a huge move and again could still uh, finish the trade all the way down so that was a, a solid sell-off with this one we're looking for a move back to 60 but could also get back to 57 on the low end so that's been fantastic what an awesome sell-off that was uh, we also have a DAR I'm in this one that's the uh, the puts uh, for 22 April 22 puts right there this one has has been trending up very nicely but has some very deep counter trend rotation so after it does a move it has a very deep rotation that follows it just had a very solid move and rejected the prior high double uh, higher high failure here and again giving it a little bit of time to work I think has a very good shot to drop back down with another deep rotation so that's DAR I'm also in DVN this one though is already kinda mature here this one's looking for a gap fill up here right now, but not a new one to watch. Uh, STN is a new one, STNE. So STNE right here. Uh, this one is a new stock. So IPO came out last October. It took out the IPO high today with a very big move up to 34 half, rejected those highs, and has now come back down uh, back below. I think it's right at 32 evens now. That's a pretty significant rejection. That's after starting this incredible move at about 21 bucks. So it's gone from 21 to 34 half in about two, two and a half weeks. Very significant move. So the fact that we're up here near these highs and rejecting, it would not surprise me to see some sort of impulse pullback to the pivot range somewhere between 26 and 28. I could probably get that impulse move right now. Let's see. Let's grab it from this low. The low is 21.27. And then this high right here is 34 half. The midpoint is 27.88. There we go. So that's a potential key range that may form. And this is this is a one of those candidates I really, really like. Something that just drives up so hard uh, and then finds a significant rejection and then snaps back very quickly. This one has high odds to reach 2788 very soon. Uh, with something like this, again, it's it's one that is uh, pretty new. So you've got to be careful about um, you know the bid-ass spread and fills and all that stuff. ST&E right now looks like quite a bit of puts were bought today the 30 strike puts 30 strike is right here 
and today 876 contracts uh, of volume and it has 2600 contracts of open interest at the April strike so um, 28 bucks would be two bucks in the money here for that one right now the 30 strike is uh, rather cheap actually it's not that cheap 150 235 bid ask spread we'll see what it is tomorrow so anyways one to consider right here but I would I would just be cautious of the bid ask spread on that one this is R U N E Warren Buffett's is S T N E then I would just uh take whatever money you get and run <laughs> here's S T N E right here no sorry uh R U N Sun Run has been just a bandit just r just run into the upside 881 low to 1709 high and that's been from the last week of December to this today and this rejection up here is very reminiscent of kind of the low kind of rejection we saw on the bottom very steep very significant I always call this kind of like a punctuation mark right it's kind of like a punctuation punctuates a sentence this punctuates a move like an exclamation point here so again if this is solid rejection perhaps we come back to the midpoint of that impulse move that would be 1295 right now we're trading 1630 and even on the low end I mean again it could be a sideways to down type of thing so if you do some sort of put spread put spread or something that could help offset some of the time decay but this one looks like a good opportunity it's rejecting prior highs over here if you look at the weekly chart you can see right up here with these highs another weekly bar rejection how much pullback does it get again I'm going for the easy money I think thir 13 could be the, the play there and that'll just give you a great midpoint and that's kind of your D-shaped profile in a nutshell sell it when it's high take it back to where everyone wants it buy when it's low take it back to where everybody wants it so that one looks like a really good play from the short side that's RUN another one is STAY STAY had a big push up and rejected on a gap up today had earnings a, a few days back this one finding resistance here around 19 and change where that's basically been value that's been the HVN there and every time it's sold away from that level or pushed away from it this one is sold away from it so it's important level here right now it's selling off away it wouldn't surprise me if we gap fill back toward uh, the previous month's close in that one one more here MMC MMC now this one's been very strong very st strong rejection on the high and is very clearly in an uptrending market so again if the market's going to turn down if the market's going to pull back a little bit more which we haven't really seen big signs of that yet we saw a nice move today but a bounce if the market's going to move lower something like this would really catch on if the market's going to remain trending up then I think that the trend wins out in this one so again this is one to watch uh, for me the area to watch tomorrow morning is right between the previous month's close and the current day's midpoint. So the midpoint is here. That's 93.48, and that's the previous month's high. So if price were to come back into that zone, that would be an easy area to look to sell. May not see a push that high. Anything into this area might then be the area to sell on a pullback phase tomorrow, if that were to be the case. So anyways, that's one to watch as well. But I really like uh, RUN. I think RUN is uh, is a really good one to watch. Uh, stay isn't isn't too bad either. STNE again. This is one that's pushed to a new high up here and might be overdone just on a near term basis. So I like um, running STNE on this side. AMCX also obviously that one that one ran off real nice <laughs> that's a good one so right now still in some of these other shorts and I'll be looking to add a, a couple of more here on the long side again uh, a couple of good candidates here XOP on the upside with a breakout candidate uh, XME is a pullback by the dip opportunity that could rally Fox is another one here that's rallied to highs 
and it's pulling back. If it can continue to hold 49.5, it has much more upside. ACHC is a change of, can change of bias candidate that could be headed to 39s. Overstock is the rounded bottom. So building out a very nice rounded bottom here with the potential to double 21 to 42. If it pulls back a little bit less, then it's even better. I think that one has a good a good shot. And KL, great, great buy the dip opportunity here as well. If price can't stay above the midpoint on the closing basis on, for, for a daily chart, then, um, you know, that one's uh, done. And then also the home builders. DHI was up 3% today. We had this one as a long candidate on Friday. Uh, and I think it's still headed higher. KBH, same thing. I'm in this one as it's headed higher as well. And then ITB, one of those. So that's kind of a quick roundup there of some of these candidates that uh, I'm looking at right now. Uh, SE right here. This one, wow, that one's a huge move right there. Rallied from about 11 bucks all the way to 23 so it's doubled this year alone. A huge move with a major gap through 17s. 17s now kind of a clear market structure level. That's kind of your market structure right there for the most part. Um, big gap up and now kind of up here. So usually what would happen, you know, unless this thing just keeps on going up like crazy, you, you come back and maybe build out up here and then continue higher. So 17 is the major point to stay above now for, for this one. Very, very strong. We've had a, a ton here that have worked out really, really nicely recently for us. Uh, Tandem here was really great on Friday, reaching the highs of about 70, 65. Uh, I took this one from 35 up to 70, so I sold half the position at 70 on Friday and turned a double on that one and going to sit on the rest for now. I think Tandem, this is one we found at 4 bucks last year and ended up going to our 8 and $12 targets and then just exploded the 52s. So I wanted to get back in when it was between 30 and 35 for a shot at doubling this thing this year. And so far it's done that and then some. And I think it has more upside as well. So the 52 half level now very important down to about 50, which is a gap fill. I would say any pullback as deep as that uh, could still offer a double down the road. I think this is headed to 90 to 100 bucks. So if this thing gets anywhere between 45 and 50 bucks, you could have another long-term double on your hand. So this one's been double, tripling, and quadrupling <laughs> since last year. Uh, again, it was a buy uh, candidate for us at four bucks for targets at four, at eight and 12. But when it started to do this, I was just dumbfounded. I couldn't believe it just kept on going. So I wanted to get big in. On, uh, on a great market structure level, 30 bucks was the great level to lean in on, and uh, it's doubled up here. It's now back above 60 here, and you can see the next market level, market structure levels up, you know, kind of above 60 will be 90, and then 110 above that. So I think this has a good clear path to get back to 90. So the next double, now that this is, you know, it's already done it here, it's done it here. I think if this pulls back to 45 to 50, it provides another shot to double between 90 and 100. So that's my thoughts on tandem. This one's been a really solid candidate for some time, and um, again, uh, was able was fortunate enough to get the 70 print up there, and uh, I've been holding that sell for a, a while, and now looking forward to to seeing how this continues to develop. Um, let's see. So right now, I think that was pretty much most of the candidates right there. I think I did have one more double candidate. It's a cheap stock. It's MRNS, very very cheap. And anytime it's something this cheap, you know, three bucks, four bucks, you have to be very careful. I usually use uh, risk capital with these, right? Um, treat them like a swing trade or something like that, and and let them graduate to a double. Uh, for the most part. 3.3 three is the level that needs to hold. And if it can continue to hold 3.3, three, I think it has a great shot to get somewhere between 7 and 8 bucks uh, up the ladder up here down the way. I think this is an accumulation phase that's kind of developing here. 
And if it starts to get the move up, uh, it could be very similar to what happened back here or what happened back here uh, where it rallies off this three buck level and goes higher. So this is another one. It doesn't look the best at the moment, but it is holding three bucks. And uh, we'll see if it can continue to hold because the day it closes below three, I think that trade's done. So again, you got to know you're out. If this thing has some day like this and it closes below that three three, you know that that idea is kicked to the curve until it can prove something. Earnings coming up on this one again. If it gaps up, I mean it could be uh, off to the races. So this one could be a candidate that could double down the road, but be careful with earnings coming up. All right. Well, that pretty much does it here for today. Um, we'll see how this plays out heading into the rest of the month but for the most part you know these markets are are very very resilient very bullish I've been very uh, good about staying long for the most part adding a little bit of counter trend risk risk which hasn't been great hasn't been bad but it you know really hadn't needed it much because it's been continuing to push higher so uh, staying long has been really really good having said that we do have some great sell candidates just in case and uh, if if these markets were to push down and break lower, uh, this is how it, you would want it to look. You know, if you're looking at this right now, you can see here is the pivot range. That's value. You know, it's tr tr trying to look like it's about to buy. And if it fails here and breaks the pivot range, I mean, it's a big leg down, right? Back to the previous month's low and all that. So. If it's going to have a sneak attack and sell off, you got to have some sell candidates ready to go, and I think we found some good ones in addition to some longs as well. All right, everyone, have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you so much for hanging out, and we'll see how these play out the rest of the month. Good luck, trade well, and I'll see you all in the trading room. Take care, folks. See you soon.